three things that will surprise you about awakening. Yesterday I was having a conversation with three different people who either are going through awakening or have recently gone through it very recently. And some of the comments they made were so interesting that I thought I would make a video and point out a few of these surprising aspects of awakening. The first is that it's not what you thought it would be. I can quote directly somebody I was talking to yesterday who said, no matter how many times you told me that I wouldn't be able to imagine what this was like, I still imagined it. I still thought it would be like something. I thought it would be something my mind imagined. Even though I didn't know I was imagining what it was like, there is still some impression of awakening being some really good experience or some juicy, enjoyable experience that I obtained. But it's truly not in the realm of experience. And no matter how I had heard that, there's no way I could have anticipated what this is. The reason for this is that what awakening is, is identity shifting out of that endlessly seeking, always imagining a better way, always living in the imagined future, always living in a sense of trying to get somewhere, trying to make things better, trying to acquire what is better than this right here, into the experience of naturalness. So the reason that we can't imagine how awakening is going to be is because the one who's doing all that imagining is what is seen to be a limited, false version of what's actually real. It's like a straw man. We bankrolled everything on its ability to make itself feel better. We, we put all our money on its ability to imagine itself into a better situation or imagine itself into control or imagine itself out of the feeling or experience of being not in control. And it turned out we were putting our money in the wrong place. That was a thought. That was a series of thoughts. That was an impression. Reality needs no impression. It makes no impression. It's just this, just here. So to reiterate that point, no matter how you imagine awakening to be, it won't be like that. Even if you try not to imagine it, the expectation you have or the expectation your mind will make that it has some flavor of the best possible scenario for you or the most enjoyable experience possible, it's just not that. Because that impression, that impression of getting somewhere that's better than here, that's endlessly enjoyable, it's tied to suffering. It's tied to the seeking itself. So the seeking and that sense of the amazing place you're gonna to get to by seeking are tied together and they're both thoughts. So awakening is seeing through this paradigm. It's seeing that that seeking was never happening. The seeker was never in play. It wasn't solid, it wasn't a thing, it didn't exist. It just distracted attention into the mind, into the thought process. And when that attention is released from that process of becoming, seeking, imagining, then reality hits you over the head. The second surprising thing, that this is not special. This that is experienced beyond awakening, beyond the non-event called awakening, it's not special. It's not a big deal. It's not a special set of conditions that has to be brought about by some kind of intense experience or intense work or intense practice. It just is. It's uncaused, natural, simple. It doesn't require energy input. It doesn't require doing. It doesn't require becoming. It's just here, just this. So because it's just this, it's not special. The sense of seeking endlessly, the sense of being bound up in thought structures, imagines something special that it can achieve and it thinks that's what it wants or perhaps that is what it wants but that doesn't provide the relief that it actually seeks the relief is the relief from seeking the relief from expecting some kind of specialness 
because specialness is separation. If you feel special, it's because you feel different and separate from others. And that's a double-edged sword. So there's nothing special about being plunged into unfiltered reality. It's just what's here. The third thing that people find surprising about awakening is that it's truly not conceptual. This is another one that people will say often, something to the effect of, I've heard you say it so many times, but I never really got it. Because every time I heard non-conceptual, I turned it into a concept. I believed I understood something. And by understanding something, I thought I was getting closer to something I wanted. But that was just using another lifeline, another thought lifeline, a belief lifeline. So this kind of conceptuality that keeps us seeking is very interesting. It often takes the flavor of spiritual knowledge. And it can really be a trap. Because you can think you know so much about spirituality, awakening, Buddhism, Advaita. You can even learn what other people say about it who are realized or seemingly are realized and repeat it to yourself or to others and believe you actually know what that means. But this is non-conceptual. Realization is by definition non-conceptual. Certainly the first movement of it has to be. So no matter how you hear a description of what awakening is, how it arises, what it's like, the mind is going to make that into a mental construct a memory and understanding. And that's fine. It's just imperative to recognize that that's not what is being pointed to. No matter how clear that description is, it's still a map. And for realization, for awakening, you have to move from the map to the territory. You have to go beyond concept. You have to go beyond understanding. And often that's uncomfortable, especially at first. And the fourth thing that's surprising about awakening, it's a bonus because I just thought of it. There's actually more than four. There are many more than four. But this is another reasonably common one. That is, after awakening, there can still be a sense of confusion at times. And this makes sense because you've moved beyond conceptuality and that part is obvious. The practitioner will often say, I get it now. I get what non-conceptuality is. I get what naturalness is. I get what's being pointed to, but it's not about me. It's not about knowledge. It's not something I learned, but it's very, very obvious. But I know I can't talk about it. I can't describe it at all, right? But that doesn't mean that the mind has completely stopped. In fact, the mind has not stopped. It might stop for a while, but often it gets revved back up for a little while after the honeymoon period. So what the mind will do is try to make a concept out of that which cannot be made into a concept. But because the identity has been disentangled largely from the mind, from the thought structures, from the ego structures, it's not nearly as sticky. You don't identify so quickly. You don't re-identify with thought and mind so easily. You may not re-identify at all for a time. So even though the mind is chattering on about whatever it chatters on about, including realization, you can see so clearly that that is not about this. That that mental activity is something like a reflection of this, but a distorted one. It's trying to make a map of the territory, but you only care about the territory now. So the sense of that, the feeling tone, is often some sort of confusion. because the tendency to take reference from the mind might still be there, even though it's clear there's no identity there. So there can be a sense of disorientation, confusion. This is often periodic. It doesn't tend to stay there continuously, but you may notice it come and go. The key here is to recognize the underlying emotion, the emotion of confusion, frustration, Sometimes you'll feel something underneath that that's more like grief, letting go, sadness, letting go of that identity. So understand that even after awakening, there can be confusion. So when someone identifies this confusion, 
they often feel very paradoxical about it because they'll say something like, I feel more rested than I ever have. There's something here that doesn't move, that feels completely at peace. And at the same time, I recognize the mind feels or is experiencing some sort of confusion. This is completely lawful, completely normal for this stage. It's best to acknowledge all aspects of experience, to acknowledge and steep yourself in that ineffable, indescribable quality of presence, of reality, of that you cannot even name and don't want to name. and know it's unnameable, but also recognize the thoughts. There can still be thoughts. Recognize that those thoughts don't define reality. They don't define you. They're just thoughts. And recognize emotion. Because emotions are going to come to the surface. And recognize the depth of presence in sound. In feeling. In movements. In textures. In a sense, your only job after awakening is to pour yourself into the ineffable, to that which escaped you for so long and now is seen to be literally everywhere, inside, outside, in no place at all, but not missing from anywhere. That and remain alert and relaxed. That's all there is to it.